Okay, so I want to check the rod bearing clearance. So I'll take off, I'll show you one, and I'll do three. Um, take the caps off of the connecting rods. And we're going to verify that we got the arrows all going the right way now. And then we're going to verify the we got the arrows on all the main and rod bearing caps going in the right direction which is to the front of the engine on this one. So uh, these got some oil during installation so I'm going to clean this off 100% if I could find where I put my shop rags. Then I'm going to get some plastic gauge, lay it across there, and do like in the main bearings. I'll show you how. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to check the clearance between the, the crankshaft and the bearing halves on the rod bearings. I'm, yes, on the rod bearings. Uh, for those that have missed previous videos on the main uh, caps when I did those, uh, this is what they call plastic gauge. And basically what it is, is there's a little filament of plastic. You can probably barely see it there on my finger. A little filament of plastic. Looks like a little mini, mini glue gun uh, strip. And you put that, you, you, it's a big strip, all, it'll, the length of this piece when you get it. And this is a measuring gauge. There's a whole bunch of them. There's mi millimeter and inch readings on there. You cut a piece to the length you want. Like, for example, I cut a little piece off like that, and out comes the filament. That's the exact, is made to real, real tight tolerances. You put that on there. Then, you put your main bearing cap, or your connecting rod bearing cap, in the direction and orientation that it's supposed to go. Tighten this up to factory spec, and then you see how much squish you get the more it squishes the wider that'll be the less it squishes which would mean you'd have more clearance the narrow it'll be you met you match that up to whether you do an inch or millimeter to the width of the squish and that'll give you there's uh, numbers on here that relate to each size of um, squish and that gives you your oil clearance between those parts So let me put the uh, rod bearings cap bolts on there. Just going to snug them up a little by hand. Then we torque them to the factory spec that they'll be sta sitting at. Usually you do like about on a, on a small one, on a low reading like I have on this small engine. Um, just do them in like two steps you know do go like halfway and then go to your final torque there we are now We'll take that off and we'll see that plastic gauge in action. Wiggle this up. And we could see a little bit of remnants here of the squish, but uh, the main piece is there. So what you're going to do, you're going to take your little measurement gauge here. It's got different ones. And we're going to see how wide that thing squished out. So I'm seeing on the millimeter side, .076 somewhere around there 
and that's just fine for this engine. I'll do the other two and get back with you. Then when you are done with your measurement, you want to make sure you get every little bit of that plastic gauge off there. I'm going to start with my fingernail and end up with a solvent just to make sure I get all that residue off of there. You want to get every bit of that off of there. And if you're doing the metro, I found in my book in two places now, the metric numbers are correct in the book and they have the decimal point wrong on the inch one, so uh, hope you're not going by that for looking up clearances. And just like we did on the main bearing caps, I'm going to use the assembly lube. It's a very tacky lubricant and it'll stay in there until we can be sure we got good oil flow. Um, coming from our engine, coming from our oil pump in the engine there. Okay, now I've got all the three measured and reassembled, lubed up, everything's ready to go. And just as a double check on uh, the machining, I'm going to take these and actually twist them, rotate them a little bit, and you should feel them give just a hair. I and I checked that one already. Each one of them's got the same amount and they both are loose in there. You know, not loose, but again, there always should be oil clearance, a small amount. Nothing should be friction. Uh, you should always have a little gap in between everything on the engine and that's the way it should be. So just check them to make sure they all feel right just in case you might have, you know, got that thing locked and then, the, the, and then it, you know, off kilter and then they still torque down fine for somehow um, shouldn't happen but just something to be aware of all right I get the engine flipped oh that's not good flip back up top and I'm putting the locating pins in these are just hollow pins and they help locate the head exactly where it goes so there should be two of those I guess that's all the way down yep goes mostly into the head One last wipe with some solvent to get off any oil residue. It's a pretty critical surface, especially on this engine. This this one pushes up like 200 psi, which is higher than a lot of vehicles are. This one really needs to have the compression to try to get any power out of three cylinders. So clean that all up. Double check. Got no got no boogers on there. Okay. Now I'm getting ready to put on the head which will finally make it look like an engine and the first thing that's very important is there's this little piece it's an oil check valve oil can go, it's got a little ball in there oil can go up into the head but it's not supposed to drain back down I guess upon startup it'll uh, you know help get the oil up there quicker that guy goes right there and there's a special copper part in the wa in the gasket there that goes there. Then this goes on head gasket. Some holes are made to be small. For example, this one's going to line up with this giant hole over here, and it's only like a quarter inch. It's supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be. Don't don't go and carve it open and think you're going to modify it and get more power or something out of it. Anyway, same thing here they know that hole is this big they're cutting a hole this big and not even that hole lines up with half the other hole so uh, just an interesting thing there next I'll get the two locating actually I should do that first put those uh, guide pins in there I'll show you what that is so those are just a cylinder hollow cylinder they go in there and they locate the head exactly onto the block 
so it's you know can't be off a little bit whereas the bolts have a little bit of give to them these things line it up a hundred percent let me see if I can get this other one now I want to show you um, this is the way my head came back to me he even painted it it's fully assembled uh, the cams are ready in the uh, arrows are marked and facing the right way he's already checked all the clearances and tolerances and everything here the valve lifters or whatever you call those little plunger caps on this type of engine um, were not replaced because they are no longer available so uh, I, I see also he took some sealant and put it on underneath here uh, the end bearing and also on the other side I see some seeping out a little red sealant there so that's probably an important thing to think about you can see the blue assembly lube all over it that's what they use at their shop is is blue assembly lube it's probably extra high temp, temp extra high uh, friction for these kind of things because these these are just rubbing one on another it's ultra hardened steel down there and I don't know if this would be tool steel or whatever anyway hard steel so that's the way mine's been done um, all new valves on mine and they of course uh, lapped them all in for me so mine's ready to assemble but you may have to do that yourself okay so I'm just gonna lay this on there and then we'll look at the bolts and all that stuff get those pins lined up rock it a little bit see if it wants to go down on there I'm gonna tap it just a little see if I can get those pins to see that one I think did and that one I think did oh I get my thing dirty already now uh, cars of a certain type need new head bolts you just throw out the old ones and they give you a whole new pack these are what they call torque to yield bolts which means you torque them you're giving them enough tightness that this metal actually stretches just slightly and keeps a clamping load on your engine uh, keeps the head clamped down because this is aluminum and that is aluminum and they like to walk around a lot more than the old school cast iron ones might have so you need to use these special bolts the problem is once you stretch them they will never stretch the same again and I have a feeling they'd be actually a little brittle so we'll put all the new bolts in these all come with washers built in which is nice why do I have two extra bolts that's a bit odd maybe this bolt set goes for the uh, four-cylinder and the three-cylinder uh, maybe the same set don't know and uh, can't can't mention it enough use the bolts that they tell you um, as you can see there's a substantial that's about an inch of engagement there um, which is much more than you'd usually use on a normal fastener for fastening general items um, you can see they've got a lot of thread engagement down here obviously so that doesn't pull out so um, don't try to rig something here because um, this one will come back and bite you there's enough heat cool cycles in this engine that uh, over time if you don't have these right something's gonna go bad on you I'll just start by running these down
general rule of thumb, if you're ever without a book, you shouldn't be, you should always get a torque spec and a book. Generally, you start with the center and work your way out when you're tightening stuff. So you'd start with like this one, this one, this one, this one, and you'd work in an outer pattern. So you're, you're, you're you know, taking out the slack from the center out. So I'm just going to start bringing these up to like 20. I've got to get an extension here. I'll bring them up to 20, then 40, then 54. You get the idea. Bring you back when we got them all torqued. Okay, cylinder heads all torqued down to spec, all the bolts. And I'm just going to throw the spark plugs in the holes. Um, I'm concerned about any debris getting in there now that I don't have a way to check it or nor get it back out. So I'm just going to loosely thread these in there just so nothing falls down, drips down, crawls in, whatever. Keep it nice. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to continue building the engine in future videos, of course. And uh, thanks for the time you spent. And uh, if you want to learn any more about the other operations involved in putting it back together, check out my next video. Subscribe. It'll uh, If you click down below, it'll give you a chance to ring the bell. And that'll give you all the notifications of the next video coming up. And you'll find this one, if you click on my uh, channel, you will find playlists. And this is in a playlist numbered one through whatever we end up with. And you can watch them in order. Thanks for watching.